Hi there, friends. How is everybody today? What I'm noticing is when I look outside, it's starting to look like springtime. And I think that's super awesome. Why don't we go ahead and let's get started with all of the things that I have planned for us to look at today. And the way we always start is that we start by lighting our candle. And our candle reminds us that Jesus and God are with us, even in the dark places. We'll leave that right there for now. Now, we have been talking a lot about the thing, the themes that have been going on for the last couple of months. So last month was Black History Month. This month is Women's History Month. And we've been able to see how some of those things have overlapped, where we've talked about not just famous women, but famous Black women. So we're going to talk a little bit more about some famous women and we're going to talk about a couple of famous women in the Bible, and then a couple of famous women that you might have even heard about. So let's take a look at our stories first, okay? Our first story is about some sisters named Mary and Martha. Let's look at them, okay? The story of Mary and Martha. Jesus and his disciples were traveling. Along the way, Jesus decided that they would visit with their friends, Mary and Martha. Mary and Martha were sisters. They lived in a house together, and they got along very well, most of the time at least. While Jesus visited them, Mary sat on the floor and listened to Jesus teach. Martha, on the other hand, was very busy. She didn't have time to sit down. She cooked olives, fish, and bread. She cleaned, sweeping the dirt floor and shaking out the mats. Martha worked hard to make Jesus' visit special. <gasps> hmm, she doesn't look very happy. As she hurried around, she saw Mary sitting down with Jesus. Grumph, she thought. Why doesn't she help me with the cleaning? A few minutes later, Mary was still sitting as Martha worked. Martha got a little bit angry. <clears throat> she cleared her throat, thinking Mary could at least help me get this meal ready. All of these people to feed, and she isn't helping one little bit. Martha continued hurrying around, getting angrier by the minute. As she swept, she thought, Rrr. Mary knows how to use a broom. As she cooked, she said to herself, Rump. I think my sister could at least stir this pot. As she got water and towels ready for cleaning Jesus' hands, she grumbled to herself, Grr, all of this company, and I am doing all of the work. Finally, when she was still working and Mary was still sitting, Martha just couldn't take it anymore. She burst into the room, interrupted what Jesus was saying, put her hands on her hips, and said angrily, Mary, please get up and help me. She looked at Jesus. Ugh, Jesus, tell Mary to get up and do something. Jesus stopped what he was doing. Everything was quiet for a minute. Finally, Jesus looked at Martha. With love, he said, Martha, Martha, you are worried about every little thing. Thank you for your work to make my visit comfortable. But you do not need to worry about all of these things. Mary has decided to sit and listen to me, and that is a good decision. Martha thought to herself, hmm, maybe I should just sit down and listen to what Jesus has to say, at least for a minute. Maybe Mary has a good idea. So she sat and listened, and that was a good decision. I love that story because it reminds us that first of all, there were women that were good friends of Jesus in the Bible. And this was from our Spark Storybook Bible. And it also reminds us that sometimes taking time to listen to people teach us things is more important than being busy. So now we're gonna jump from our Spark Storybook Bible to the book that we've been using to learn about women who are important to history today. So this is our book called She Persisted. 
And we are going to learn about two different women today. And the first one, I have to find it, is a woman named Sally. And she is famous because she was one of the first astronauts. So let's learn about this. Sally Ride always believed women could succeed in math or science. Although not everyone agreed, she persisted and she became the first American woman in space. But that wasn't enough for Sally. She traveled into space once more and then created science and engineering programs specifically for girls so she could help generations of young women achieve their dreams, both on Earth as well as in outer space. And here is what she had to say. This is her quote. It says, young girls need to see role models in whatever careers they may choose, just so they can picture themselves doing those jobs someday. You can't be what you can't see. Now, let's learn about one other person, and you've probably heard of this person. And this is a woman named Oprah Winfrey. And our book here says Oprah Winfrey's grandmother expected Oprah to follow in her footsteps and become a maid. Oprah knew, even as a little girl, that her dreams would take her somewhere else. She persisted in turning those dreams into her reality, and she became a media superstar, working in movies, books, magazines, theater, and most of all, television, where the Oprah Winfrey Show remains the highest rated talk show of all time. Pretty amazing, right? And her quote says, the biggest adventure you can ever take is to live the life of your dreams. I hope it's been fun to look at all of these very, very important women who remind us that any one of us can do anything as long as we believe in ourselves and we follow our dreams. Okay, so it was great hearing about those very famous women. And now we're going to switch gears because remember, we also talked about that March is the month that we usually do our big food drive at church. And all of the food that we donate and all of the money that we donate goes to Groveland Food Shop. And in the newsletter, every single week, I have had a challenge for you to do with your family. And this week's challenge has to do with recognizing something called a food desert. Now, desert only has one S in it. It's not like dessert that has two S's, right? And I've got a bunch of canned goods here because one of the things that we have been learning about with food deserts is that there are places in our own community where people live, but there isn't a grocery store close by. And so, like, for me, where I live, there's literally at least five grocery stores within about 10 minutes drive of my house. So I can get milk and cheese and fresh fruit and fresh vegetables super easily where I live. But there are some places where they don't have any grocery stores close by, and maybe there's a gas station or a convenience store so you could buy chips or maybe some um, canned soup, but there's not a lot of choices for really healthy food. And that's a really big problem if you're trying to have a healthy diet. So in order to kind of think about what that might be like, your food challenge for this week is to go into your pantry. And I want you to find either canned goods or boxed goods box goods. So I just grabbed some pasta out of my pantry and some cream of chicken soup and corn and some tuna. And you're going to have different things in your house. But what I want you to do is see if you can make a meal without using anything that would be in your refrigerator. Okay. All either box goods or canned goods. 
And that might be a great way to remember as a family that some people live like that most of the time. And then that helps us also remember that the money that we donate to the Groveland Food Shelf goes so that they can buy milk and fresh fruits and fresh vegetables so that they can have those available to the people that use the food shelf for some of their food needs. Okay, so I hope you enjoy that challenge together as a family. Now, we're gonna close our time together with our Lenten cards and with our Lenten candles. So what we have done is we've already lit our Christ candle because we remember that even though there was a time after Good Friday that Jesus was wrapped up and in a cave, we know that that light of Jesus just never quite went out. So we're going to light all the rest of our candles, and then we're going to do what our cards tell us to do next, okay? Now, I also happen to know that the scripture for this week has to do with listening to God and with doing the things that God would have you do in the time and place where you are living. So let's read our cards. It first says, light eight tea lights and the Christ candle, and that's what we just did. And then where the confess part says, gracious God, have mercy on us when we follow paths that lead us away from being your light in the world. Forgive us when we choose to be mean, hurtful, or exclude others. Turn our hearts toward your path. Amen. So now we get to blow out six candles. And remember last week, blowing out four over here is pretty easy. But now blowing out two out of the four is a little harder for me. One. Oops. I have to relight one because I accidentally blew out three. That's okay, though. So now we have only two lights left. And that reminds us that we're getting pretty close to Holy Week. Now, like I said, our scripture for this week really focuses on what is it that we can do here and now that would help with the plans that God has for our beloved community. Let's read the meditation, and then we'll look at the choices that we have in our hearts this week. It says, now my soul is troubled. And what should I say? God, save me from this hour? No. It is for this reason that I have come to this hour. So you see, that's Jesus saying, I know things are going to get hard, but this is what God wants me to do right here and now. Let's look at our cards for this week. I can tell you that all of our cards have to do with being anti-racist and helping to do our part to end racism. So the first one looks like this little cactus guy here, and it has us looking internally. And at the very end, it says, embrace these words from the poet Rumi. Yesterday, I was clever, so I wanted to change the world. Today... I am wise, so I am changing myself. It reminds me that we have to have a good position with our own selves before we can change much of anything else, right? Now, the next card has a whole bunch of books that you could read as a family that will help you get a little bit better ideas about being anti-racist. And you could buy these books either on Amazon or possibly in your school library. We definitely have all of these in the Hennepin Library. And if you go to the Hennepin website, it will tell you how to request books from our library. The next one has a couple of websites. This says support black owned businesses in your area. And then it has two websites that you can go to that will help you find black owned businesses wherever you live close to your house. This next one has a couple of additional websites that you can go to to help locally 
with um, racial disparities and racial justice. So take a look at those. And then this one is a really easy one to do at home. So this says if you have a green thumb, this is a great time to plant some vegetable seeds. And then if you want, you could donate your seedlings to a community garden so that somebody else can finish growing them and that they can have the benefit of all of those fruits and vegetables that they might be able to grow with your seedlings. And it says that you can check out MinneapolisParks.org to find a community garden that would be interested in getting those seedlings. And then finally, here is our tea ceremony. And remember, your tea ceremony as a family doesn't have to be with tea, right? You can do it with any beverage that you like. But here are the questions for the week. The first one is what is your earliest memory of becoming aware of racism? The next one says, talk about a time when you or someone else did something racist. Did you interrupt it? Did you speak up? Why or why not? The last question is, is there anything you haven't done yet, no matter how large or small, that you are willing to do to help end racism? If so, what is it? And what plan can you put in place to start doing it? Those are all such great ideas. And I hope that as a family, you can take advantage of some of those. Let's close with our prayer, okay? Our prayer says, May God bless you and keep you. May the radiant face of God shine upon you as you seek out and find what God is calling you to do. Amen. Have a good week, everybody. Bye-bye.